as we lay A.J. Owens to rest um, on this very difficult day for her family, her mother, Pamela Diaz, but especially for her four children. And it's been very tough on her two boys who witnessed her uh, shot and killed 12-year-old Isaac, 9-year-old Israel, and then you have 7-year-old Africa, her daughter, and then 3-year-old Titus. This is a very emotional day for them. You heard her mother, Pamela, crying out during the services, but also, Takima, we know her daughter, Africa, was crying during the service, saying, I want my mama. And that would be a cry, I'm sure, that will continue to cry out for many years to come as she and her brothers grow uh, in this world. I'll let Attorney Thomas say a few remarks, and then we'll have the leaders, uh, these strong women leaders, both in the legislature and in the community, uh, greet you, and then we'll take some questions. Thank you, Attorney Crump. Um, my name is Anthony Thomas. On behalf of the family, A.J. Owens, um, our fight is not over. Certainly, we asked for earlier this week an arrest. That arrest was made by the Sheriff's Department, and we appreciate that, but we're not satisfied. Our work now and our focus is on the State Attorney's Office, who's told me that he will research a murder two charge. That's what we're looking for. He has some days in order to pre uh, present his formal uh, information. And so our focus right now is to get the charge commensurate with the act, which is the unjustified killing without any reasonable means whatsoever for life or any sort of human in this matter where Susan pointed that gun at the door and shot A.J. Owens. Thank you. That's all I have. Now we will hear from our leader, State Representative Fentress Crisco. Thank you, attorneys. And what a sad day for us to be here as we lay A.J. Owens to rest. But we know that this is when the work starts in earnest to make changes to the law. Uh, we have members of the Florida House Democratic Caucus, including Representative Yvonne Henson, Representative Dottie Joseph, Representative Michelle Rayner, and others, who every year push and try to make some effort to reform the Stand Your Ground law, including to repeal it. Because what it's done is it's created this culture of vigilantism, where people believe that they are justified at taking the law into their own hands. And we need to bring the temperature down. It is not okay in Florida or any state in this nation. It is not okay on any day of the week for an unarmed mother who is just trying to protect her little one to get shot through a locked metal door. That is not okay, and that is what this atmosphere of vigilantism has created. You know, we just finished a legislative session in Florida where the legislature, the Republicans in the legislature also passed a permitless carry bill. There's a permitless carry law that has now removed any requirement for training or for you to have a permit to have a concealed carry weapon, even though there were 77% 77 of Florida voters who said they didn't want that law. What we're seeing is just this increasing ratcheting up of the temperature and the pressure, and it's time to take it down. And we will press and pursue and continue to push for justice for AJ. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, State Representative Grisco. Um, you know, it is a wake-up call mm -hmm. for Florida especially, but also for America. We got to push the second commandment over stand your ground. We got to push love thy neighbor over this archaic stand your ground law that says, shoot my neighbor. Mm. It, it can't be that we resolve all our differences with violence because that would lead to more unjustifiable, unnecessary, and senseless acts of violence on our neighbors. So let's remember today as we pay our final respects to A.J. Owens, let's love thy neighbor not shoot thy neighbor. Uh, we're going to have Miss Takima Robinson, who is a force of nature. She has helped the family uh, heal, but also she's working to help the community heal 
why she continues to zealously, zealously push for justice for AJ. You know, we have to fight not only in the court of law, but also in the community. And she's helping lead the activists to say, we won't go quietly into the night and we won't let them sweep AJ's death under the rug. Mm -hmm. Ms. Takima Robinson. My name is Takima Robinson, um, and I am really grateful um, for all of you all shining a light on this. Um, as a representative of the family, um, I just want to extend our gratitude to everyone who came mm -hmm. out to celebrate AJ's life. But this is where the work for justice for AJ begins. We have a long road ahead of us, not only on the road of justice, but the road of healing. The question I've gotten more than anything is how are the children? Mm -hmm. How are the children doing? These children have been traumatized to their core. We are just beginning to stabilize them. We have a young, we have a three-year-old who doesn't even understand what has happened. So I implore folks to let this not be the last time we see you. We need you at the prayer vigils that will continue to happen. We need you at the actions. We're going to need you at the courthouse. We're going to need you at the state legislature. Because I believe, I believe that Stand Your Ground created the environment in which this woman felt emboldened to do this to AJ, to take her life. So um, I want to lift up that on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, from five to seven o'clock in Ocala Downtown Square, there will be a prayer vigil for justice. We are asking the community to come out to begin the healing process as well as the justice process. Bring flowers, bring trinkets, bring teddy bears, bring balloons, because we're gonna continue to say her name we're gonna to continue to say AJ Owens and to demand justice for her. This is the last, this is not the last time you have heard from us. Mm -hmm. We are gonna be standing on this, staying on this. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work to do in this community. Um, shortly after AJ's death, we found out that the woman helping decorate the repast lost her child on Tuesday. So clearly gun violence is an epidemic in this community. And we hope that this is not just about AJ, but about everyone in this community. This cannot be the way that we continue to be in relationship with each other. This cannot continue to stand Florida. Mm -hmm. AJ did what every single parent would do. She wasn't a black mother in that moment. She was a mother. She was a parent. Mm. So let this not just be a black and white issue. Let this be an issue of parents having the right to protect their children. I thank you all for being here. I thank you for continuing um, to keep a light on this story, um, and we will again continue to call for justice for AJ. Yeah, the <coughs> vigil on Wednesday is from 5 to 7 in the downtown square in Ocala. Uh, so at this time, we'll take some of your questions if you have any. inside of their fighting against their stand of using stand your ground. I know you're, you guys are pushing for the murder charge and in relation to AJ, but in relation to also her son that was next to her, was mom and David and charges ever considered for him being on the other side of the door? Uh, there, uh, but there were charges yeah. brought against Susan for those, uh, for that act. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. No, those charges were brought and as we said before, the state attorney has the prosecutorial discretion mm -hmm. to increase the charges as we have often seen them do uh, with other members of our community. We want the same zealous prosecution that they do prosecuting people in our community that they would do when people harm people 
who live in our community. How do you all send that ring camera video and does it show anything that may can help your case? We haven't uh, seen the video. I haven't seen it. We haven't seen no, it. No, as a matter of fact, the state's attorney has not um, provided me with that video, but he did tell me that um, he could not see anything. Um, at night, the, the camera goes into an infrared mode, and so there wasn't any depth perception or focus on that camera enough to see anything that happened. But we know there is rain cam video of uh, 12 year old Isaac knocking frantically on neighbors' doors, and it's just heartbreaking. How hopeful are you that the state attorney's office will actually go through and upgrade that to a second degree murder charge? How hopeful am I? Or how confident am I? Mm -hmm. Both. Well, I am hopeful that, uh, from er what everybody tells me in the community, he is a state attorney who believes in equal justice under the law. But as I have been taught by my grandmother, I rather see a sermon than hear one. So equal justice means whatever you would have did had the roles been reversed against AJ. If she had shot a 58-year-old white woman through a locked metal door after screaming racial epithets at her children, whatever you would charge that black woman, well, you need to charge a white woman, and it just needs to be fair. It needs to be the American promise of equal justice under the law. You think uh, Susan's I don't know if you, enough? I'm sorry? Do you think Susan's body is enough? No, we don't. As a matter of fact, Susan was um, originally held under a no bond. Um, the state's attorney at the, at the bond hearing um, realized that he didn't have any um, sort of leg to stand on as it relates to the law in order to keep her or what they call pretrial detention. And so we agreed to that as well. However, we wanted the judge to set that bond that, of course, like I said before, that was commensurate with the act of killing a human being without any regard for her life whatsoever. And so we felt as though the state's attorney's asking of a $200,000 bond was not enough. And of course, the judge thought that 154 would better serve Susan. And we understand that uh, she is innocent until proven guilty because there are far too many people in our community who are given unreasonable bonds and unreasonable bails. So we want it to be a reasonable bail that shows she's innocent until proven guilty. However, you know, we just keep going back to it. We see young African-American people get bonds in this region that are just outrageous for lesser crimes. And so we just appeal again to equal justice under the law. People always try to say, oh, we up here um, ranting and raving uh, about racial issues. Nah, what we're ranting and raving about is the American promise of equal justice under the law. Whatever you do to us when you charge us with crimes, we want you to do it when people kill us. Don't change the rules. Let's not have two justice systems. Let's have equal justice for the United States of America citizens, whether they're black or they're white. If there are no further questions, we will keep you updated. I will say this. Her statement is practically unbelievable. I mean, the things she says in those statements, if AJ would have said those statements, you don't even have to guess what the charge would be. But you all, you dissect that statement. She researched Stand Your Ground. She admitted to calling the children the N-words mere minutes before she shot their mother through a locked metal door with her, ch her child standing beside her. Y'all look at that statement. It is, uh, it is heartbreaking and jaw-dropping to say the least. Thank you.